Hello, I'm Leroy Hyatt. Welcome to a new series on fly tying the angler's art. We dedicate this series to the life of Dave Ingebretson, an educator, lifelong advocate for the sport of fly fishing, and my friend. We carry with us the fond memories of Dave's passion for the sport and his intense interest in educating future fly fishers. Dave left a legacy combining sportsmanship, conservation, and education. We hope to further promote this legacy as we present further programs in this series. My new host is Carolyn Sells. Carolyn is an avid fly fisher and seasoned tire. I'm excited to have the opportunity to work with Carolyn as we explore new methods and patterns in the art of fly tying techniques and the exchange of tips on how to enhance your fly tying experience. Welcome to my new co-host and friend, Carolyn Sells. Thank you, Leroy. This should be a lot of fun. I'm really happy to be here. Hopefully we make it fun for everybody else. Absolutely. So, we're going to tie three flies for this show. Start off by telling us what the three patterns uh, are. We're going to do a bloody midge, mm -hmm. a bitch crick nymph, and a hot spot. Bitch crick, that's the one you weave the body on? Yeah, we'll see how that one turns out. And you're going right. to start out with the bloody midge? A bloody midge. Bloody midge. Also, I have a number 16 dry fly hook out. I'll use an 8 aught black tying thread. The black tying thread will make up the rear two thirds of the body. The uh, front third of the body or thorax area will be red antron dubbing. Again, a parachute fly. The post will be the uh, pearl fl uh, crystal flash. The hackle will be black. I have a number 16 dry fly hook in the vise. I will take the 8 aught thread and start at the eye again and move just slightly back because I'm going to put a post of this crystal flash on there. So I don't need to dress the whole fly as yet. I will very shortly. Now is this a fly that you've used before? I have not used this okay. before. Uh, I tied it. I took it down to work one day and a guide came in that uh, works the uh, uh, Henry's fork a lot. He absolutely fell in love with it, took a copy of it, wanted to go home and tie with it. I'm kind of anxious to see what kind of luck he has with it over there. Uh, I really want to use the fly here. I, I think it will be a very productive fly So he's here. using it on a stream then? Henry's on, on a stream, so, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to tie in the post. And it's hard, the, the thing of tying just one fly at a time, it's hard to know how thick to make that post, how tall to make the post. Uh, you know, and w when you tie a three or four of them in a row, then it works very well. You know exactly where you are with proportions and measurements. But we'll do our best with this, and I may have cut that post off a little short, but we'll see what happens. All right, I've stood it up, and now I'm going to wrap around it just to get it all gathered together and make uh, a little post there to stiffen it up. and just a few wraps there to go around it because I will finish that when I come back. To the rear, this fly has no tail at all. I think this fly will kind of sit in the film. It will float quite low in the water. And I'm just going to build a little black thread tying ba or base back here with my tying thread. Mm -hmm. And if I were doing this for myself at home, I would now coat that with uh, head cement, but I won't do that here because uh, I don't want to get all the hackle and everything mixed into it. Now I'll take the red antron and I'll dub it on. And again, I'm like you, I don't like to use wax right, just when I your dub. Fingers. Yeah, yeah it, to me the wax just mats everything down. All right, that may be too much, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go just behind that post for now. I'll come to the front, wrap to the eye, and back to the front again. Now I know that we've done one or two parachutes already in this series, but parachutes have become very popular. Uh, I have learned this new way to finish a fly off that I feel comfortable in showing the technique. And that's always of the hardest is it. finishing them off. Yeah, cleanly. it is. Yep. It really is. So I'll build that up just a little bit 
more. So the rear of the fly is just mainly thread. Just mainly in thread. That's body. all it is. Okay. I'm going to clip just a little bit of that antron off that was hanging there to the rear. Now I have a black hackle out. It's already sized. I'll strip this off. People always say to me, well, do you have the hackle as you wrap this with the shiny side up or shiny side down? Mm -hmm. I have it with the shiny side up. That's just my own personal preference towards thing. Towards you. Towards me. I'm tying it in towards me right now. So you're tying this directly to the post. Tying it to the post. The stem, the stem is stem going is up, up okay. the post, which will also then help stiffen that post slightly. And then I'll move my tying thread back down. And then I always take a little bit of and this you're rubber base. Up with the tying thread in front of you. In right? front of me, hanging you. over the yeah. hook. Okay. Because the thread will or the yeah, thread will never again go around the hook shank. Everything from this point on goes around the base of this post, post. or wing. Okay. Now I put that rubber base glue on there. I've also seen people use a super glue because so many times what happens is you catch a fish with a parachute the hackle wants to lift off right. of the wing post. That's where you lose it first. Yes. You know? So this way, either with this or with super glue, whatever you use, it will at least help keep that from happening. Now you started at the top and start you're at the top coming, and work down. down okay. Yes. Now I'm going to go around the post and the hackle at the same time, and that will capture that hackle. I'll clip it off. Then I'll take my whip tool. And I know you do this with your fingers. I have not yeah. tried to do this around this post with my fingers, but with the, the uh, whip tool, works very well. Finish it off, take a couple of quick wraps, and that wing post came out pretty close to the right height. I may cut that down just a little bit. But there's a bloody midge. It's tied with uh, black thread for the rear two-thirds of the fly. I dubbed then red antron for the thorax area. The post is pearl crystal flash. The hackle is black. And now for our second fly, Carolyn's going to tie a bitch crick nymph. And this is a woven bodied fly. Right. I have seen the fly. I have tried to tie the fly. I cannot make it look right. So I gave up on it. Well, we'll see Maybe what we can, can do. Maybe you can show me what yeah. to do. Okay. <laughs> So tell us what we're ha what's happening with it. Uh, okay, I'm going to use a black uh, six aught thread, mm -hmm. uh, size eight, long shank hook. We have some white rubber legs, rubber material. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some orange poly, uh, black chenille, and brown hackle. Okay. Now it surprises me when I saw the material out there that you use black chenille and orange mm -hmm. poly. It would seem like you would use both chenille. You know, but it must, the pattern calls for the poly, it must be... the way it called the, for, maybe yeah, it's the, the way it weaves onto the bottom, I don't know. Could be, or the difference in the contrast of the two materials, oh, okay. maybe. Okay. Um, so we're going to try to get this to weave right, so... Okay, we're going to dress our hook, just like normal. Lay down a little cement. Okay, I've already got a couple little pieces of rubber cut to length here. We're going to lay both strands out here on top. So this will be feelers and tail. Right, feelers and tail. We're going to lay this right on top, right together, nice and smooth. Try to keep them on top. Now you fish this, do you weight this fly? You can. Um, I usually fish this with like a sinking tip. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, works really, really good. On and the I've seen them point. tied yep. quite large sizes, too. Really Must nice represent a stonefly? Uh, yeah, I think it, would it be probably my guess. does. Yeah. Okay, so now we've laid, put a little coating of glue on this just to hold the, everything down good and tight. We're going to put on our chenille. I'm going to lay this on one side. Oh, you tie them on opposite sides right. of the hook? Oh. Yeah. And we'll put our poly on the other. Now, is there a reason for that? Just to keep them separated? No, just as you... try to help me get started with the weave, oh, okay. I think. Okay. Um, now, the trick with this fly is to try to keep the orange poly on the bottom underside. And, of course, your black chenille across mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this goes here. Tie this in on the front. 
Can't even and, take I'll, and you know, I'll give you a lot of credit for tying this fly. It's a whole lot different when you're sitting in your house, your own fly tying room. <laughs> Rather than doing without it here. Without everything going on around you. Well, we'll you. see how stuff goes. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is twist it and pull your orange back underneath. Uh -huh. Catch it again with the black. And then around black the top. over. Pull your orange oh, you back under. you capture it with one finger over the top. Yeah. And we're gonna weave it under again. Uh -huh. Pull your black over. So you're going behind that orange yeah. poly every time you come yeah. across the top. Okay. And hopefully when we flip this over, we've got mostly orange underneath. I have confidence in you. You do. You'll have orange underneath. Okay, a couple more I think. You know, a lot of right stoneflies do have an orange cast to them. They really do. And now we're going to we're going to tie both of these off right here. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut the orange off. Okay. Oh, but not the black. And we're going to leave the black. Oh, I know why. Yep. It'll be a wing case. Yep. Tie that orange down really good. Okay, we're going to pull this back here a little bit. Now we're going to put our tie in our hackle. Oh, I've got one laying here. And I like but to chrome these down. Probably not very many wraps with this, though, either. Uh, yeah, you want to keep this sparse. Yeah. Put a little comb on each side, and we're going to tie this right in front of that black chenille that we left. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're going to bring this right up to the eye of the hook, and then we're going to finish wrapping out our chenille. Let's get this out of the way. Oh, I see. Okay. Now we're going to build this up just slightly larger. So you're making a larger thorax right. with the black. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kay. Okay. Tie this off up here. In fact, if, if you wanted, you could even stop that and tie in a larger size chenille to yeah, bulk it could. up that much you more. Yeah, you could. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to finish it off just with our hackle. Just palm that through. Yep. Maybe three, four times. Okay. We're going to get four out of this one. Okay. Finish that off. We're going to clip this. And then one. you'll cut the legs and tail, whatever length. Whatever you length want. you want to do. And we'll go ahead. Do you and leave them normally on the long side? Uh, I'd like to leave the front a hair shorter than the back. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to finish this tie fly out right here in front of the little antenna. Which will also make that antenna stand, stand up. Stand up a little, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, looks like we're pretty straight. We're going to cut this off. Okay, I'm going to trim these up a little bit shorter. Even these out here in the back. And let's see how we did. Oh, look at that. We got not quite a bit of shabby. orange, not too not shabby. Not too shabby. Bitch pretty Crick, nice that works fly. pretty darn good. Bitch Crick, nip. neat. Okay, what we used was um, we got a size 8 hook, we've got uh, white rubber. Uh, material for the antenna and the, and the tail section. We have black chenille, some orange poly, and brown hackle. Now, Carolyn, you have showed us how to tie the fly. Now I'm curious, where do you fish the fly? How do you fish the fly? What type of water do you fish the fly? Do you call any stories of catching fish with the fly? Well, this is a, a very favorite pattern for like the Clark Fork. Um, oh, okay. In Montana? In okay. Montana. And you can fish this, you know, a couple different ways. You can add weight to it. Uh, you can use a, a, a floating line, fish the, the foam lines with it. Um, if it's got deeper holes, which the Clark Fork does, I'll sure. use a sinking tip line with this fly and uh, works very good deep. Do you cast it against the bank? and strip it back to you it, as you're floating? You can do that, or a dead drift, oh, okay. right right down okay. a deep deep hole. Um, this fly, I've actually caught the largest cut bow, which is a hybrid, well, you know, cutthroat rainbow cross, cross the two, that I've sure. ever caught really? on the Clark Fork in really? Montana. This this is the fly that got that fish. How big a fish? You got my attention. Uh, he was probably right around three pounds. No kidding. In the Clark Fork. No so that, kidding. That was exciting. He took me for a good ride. Now, did you have a strike indicator on that? Uh, no, I was fishing? I was fishing him all 
Just by feel. No so kidding. that was that was pretty good. He he it was on a sinking tip line. Uh -huh. on a, in a deep a, hole. In a deep hole, yeah. Spring, fall? No, actually it was fall. And really? so yeah, and he hit it like a ton of bricks. So well, it was great. Those big fish will be bulking up at that time yep. of year though yep. for winter coming yep. on too. And that's a pretty good size fly, well, so that was a good fly, meal. Neat fly. I don't know that I can still accomplish that weave, but I, I uh, promise you I'll go it, home and try it. it. It's a good trick. I'll Practice go home and it. Try it's it. actually a lot of fun once you get it down, so it's it's a good fly. Okay, now the next uh, fly we're going to tie is called a hot spot, right? And mm -hmm. this is actually a variation of another fly, the renegade. Called a renegade. So we're going to tie the renegade first and then the hot spot, comparing right. the two patterns. Right. Okay, for the Renegade, I'll use a short shank, dry fly hook, that's a number 10. The tag will be the silver tinsel, the body, the peacock curl, and then brown hackle and white hackle. For it, I have a number 8, or a number 10, I mean. Fly in the vise, the barb is pinched. Start my tying thread. Dress the entire hook shank like we always do. Yep. Come to the rear. Now, I'm going to take just a small piece of tinsel. Don't need a great deal. The only thing I'm doing is just putting a tag on it. Now tinsel, almost all tinsel is mylar, comes mylar anymore. Don't see much of the metal. Comes two colors, white and gold. I want this uh, white or silver side to be up. And of course I tell you that and the gold comes up. So then this, I'm going to wrap this just, is just a little flash tag. Just right? a little flash mm -hmm. tag. And I'm not sure it's all that necessary as far as the fish goes. But it's a little window dressing. Uh, at times, I think it really might help to catch fish. Now, this renegade can be fished wet or dry. Many times, I will float this fly through a run, right. twitch it, twitch the rod, sink it, and then work it back to me as a wet fly. And at times, can be extremely effective that way. Then if you want to fish it dry again, just pick it up, whip it dry and uh, start fishing again. Now, brown hackle will go to the rear. What this is, is a four and a half fly. If you're using good hackle with this, that hackle will just float that fly and float that fly. In fact, sometimes it's a little difficult to get the fly to sink to come back with good hackle. You can also tell if you have good hackle when you complete the fly. If you lay it in the palm of your hand and uh, just roll it in the palm of your hand, let it bounce. It's unbelievable what will happen with that. Unbelievable. Now, I'll tie this peacock in by the tip. And we're just going to make a little body here out of peacock. And again, peacock, I don't think you can get a better body material anywhere than with peacock. With you wrap it to make it a little wrap more durable. Wrap it to make it durable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to the hackle I just put in, and you can go back over it, give it a little bit of a cigar shape or a ball shape, football shape, whatever you want to call it. And there's the body. Then the front is going to be nothing more than white hackle. Tie that in with a shiny side to the front. And this is such a versatile little, oh, little fly. It, yes, it's great. Yes. Small streams. Uh, it's a great fly. And you know, there's several patterns out there. There are variations of this one. But the next one I tie, the hot spot, is a, a variation of this, I'm sure. Uh, just with a little window dressing in it with the red, and I'll show you that as a we go more along. Mm -hmm. We'll build a little head. And there's a renegade. Very, very simple. Very, very, very versatile, quick, very yes. versatile fly. Now the next fly I tie, it's called a hot spot. It is definitely a variation of that uh, renegade. I tie this on a long shank hook. I will not use the silver on this one. I will swap. I will use the red uh, stretch nylon. I will also not use the white hackle. It will be a brown hackle. Oh, on both ends. Only, okay. yes. So I have the long shank hook in the vise. This one is also a number 10. And we'll try to show you both of these flies together when we get through with them. And then you can look and see what the difference of the two is. 
All right, brown hackle. Find the right end. Peel some off and give a wrap. And then we'll build again. Just It's a four and a half fly, identical to the other one, except it's on a long shank hook. And it's going to have a little window dressing in the center. And the pattern said you could use any bright colored uh, awesome. material in the, in the center of it. Uh, I think green is on occasion used. Uh, I like red because around our area we have a lot of cutthroat. So I use a lot of the red. Yeah, they like a little. Sure red. do. I'll just peel off a little bit of this red stretch nylon or stretch floss. Oh, no, I don't. I don't want that yet. I need a little piece of peacock. I had some peacock laid out there, but I don't know where it went. Dropped it on the floor or something. <clears throat> so we'll get just a few more strands. Tie this in. So far, it's absolutely no different than the renegade we just tied. Missing the tag, and that's it. Missing the okay. tag. We'll build just, again, just a little bit of a body here, a butt section, if you will. Then I'm going to come back off of this and wrap this peacock forward. I think I'm going to still be able to use those bottom sections mm -hmm. with it. That way it will save me tying on a new one. Now I'll put this red in. And I like this stretch uh, floss. I really do. It holds its color in water a whole lot better than just regular floss does. Then here comes the red. Just giving it a red center. Very similar to the Royal Wolf, yeah. the Royal Stimulator we just tied. Uh, it's just a little bit quicker. I'm going to go over it twice just to make sure it gets a nice, even color variation in it. We'll clip that. Here comes the peacock once more. Just build a little ball right there in front. Get that tied off. Clip it, if I can get it all together. My brown hackle once more. But you can see the the uh, how I'm sure it's got its name. I mean, with that hot spot yep. in there, and the variation of the uh, the renegade, it's it's got to be a, a fly that would work very well for cutthroat. Uh, I like that longer shank with it. I mm -hmm. think it would work very well, uh, even in larger sizes. I think it would do well. Get it all untangled. Build a little head. Got one straggler sticking out there. You, you know, yeah. you always have that. There's just There's no just getting one. around it. I know it. We'll put a whip finish on it. And I won't take time to uh, put head seam in on oh, that. But there's a hot spot, brown hackle front and rear, peacock. Uh, and red stretch nylon, stretch floss for the center red piece. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. We had a mm -hmm. good time. The flies we covered was a bloody midge, mm -hmm. a bitch crick, a renegade, and then a renegade uh, variation called a hot spot. And I'm anxious to try that hot spot. I really think it will be a good fly. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Leroy and Carolyn have produced a 60-minute video demonstrating how to tie 10 of their favorite flies. Available on DVD number 28 for $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Programs from this series are also available on DVD. Each disc contains two programs and costs $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Please indicate disc number 21 for this episode. You can get the complete series of 13 programs for $89.95. Credit cards are accepted. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website, kwsu.org.
For more information about this program, please visit our website, kwsu.org.